Hello everyone, Only Draven here again, and today we're doing another tutorial in Minecraft Sky Factory 4. Today I'm going to be showing you how to use the controller block uh, that is part of the Simple Storage Network. Uh, the Simple Storage Network is literally a storage system available in Sky Factory 4 and is my preferred system uh, and one of the more popular ones. Controller block is very beneficial and will help you control uh, different auto crafting processes in that system. Now, if you find this video helpful and you like it, please be sure to click like. Most importantly, please remember to hit that subscribe button. That way you can see all my videos and tutorials as they come out. All right. So, uh, to make the controller block of the simple storage system, it's relatively easy. You just need one piece of obsidian, four lapis blocks, and four processing cables, which are the cables that are part of that same simple storage network. Now, if you are unfamiliar with how to make or use a simple storage network, I am going to link that tutorial down in the description of this tutorial. You may want to check that one out first. I'm also going to be going over the basics of how to automate production in a simple storage network. I'm going to kind of cover that here, but I'll link the tutorial directly to that down there as well. So what I've already built is the beginnings of a simple storage network. I have the storage network master, storage request table. I have a filing cabinet with a iron sapling on top with a hopping bonsai and blue mulch, the best mulch you can get a hold of. And inside of that filing cabinet is a file for each of the things that an iron sapling will produce. Iron uh, acorn, iron amber, iron leaves, iron saplings themselves, oak wood sticks, and I've made an additional folder for iron amber. Now that's important because the process we're gonna look at today, we're going to use as our example, automating iron amber. All right, so the simple storage network itself, none of that actually needs power, which is great. Uh, we are going to use a little bit of power for our auto crafter in this system. For that, I'm using just a creative energy battery. Any RF source will run an auto crafter, uh, so no real complication there. So what I'm going to do here, grab a couple components first. And in order to use the controller, we need something to control, and that is auto crafting. So what we're going to do here is we're going to set up an auto crafting process. Okay, so I've got an auto crafter. Get it some power here. You know, now it's got power. You don't see any, and you usually won't until the power kicks in or you start messing with your uh, actual recipe. Uh, but once you've got power going to it, you do want to change it to requires redstone. And we're going to slap ourselves a lever on the front of it. That way it will not start crafting until we flip this lever. Now, now that we have that set up here, go ahead and get rid of these things. For our processing cable, we're still going to need that. And then we need to set up our actual recipe. So for that, I'm going to need four acorn. See, I did that twice. And I'm going to need five resin. Did that twice. And then I'm going to need one iron amber. And I only need one of those. All right, so inside our auto crafter, we're going to set up the recipe we're looking to make. And in this situation, it's going to be iron amber, which is five resin in an X pattern, and four acorn in the empty slots. You'll see the power now shows because I've fiddled done something with this. Still going to leave that off. Once you've got that set up, we're going to add our processing cable. The processing cable can be connected anywhere in your simple storage network. It can be connected to these cables, can be connected to either of these blocks. You can just run simple storage cables across your world and connect them anywhere that you'd like. And that's the reason the controller block exists. Now that we've got our processing cable on there, we need to tell it what we want it to process. We want it to take four iron acorns and five iron resin out of our system, turn that into one iron amber, and pull that iron amber back out. But that recipe is now set. It says transaction valid. That way we know we have put in a correct recipe. Now, if this recipe made four amber, for example, I would have to click with four amber here. The amount that you click on the right has to be what a single recipe process would make. And in this situation, it's one uh, amber for four acorn and five. Now we're going to go over here. We're going to flip that on. So we look inside. You'll see it just put the acorn there, right? We've got to kickstart it by putting in the second component. Oop. And you'll see it's making a ton of iron amber. Now I'm going to turn that off real quick. All right, now normally, if you just want this to craft forever, you know, I can turn it back on again. You'll see it's going to keep going. You can toggle that off and on as you need. Very, very easy. 
But let's say hypothetically that you have this little auto crafting setup somewhere else in your world. It's connected to your simple storage system. Maybe you've got it inside a compact machine or you've got it, you know, a whole like 30 or 40 different auto craftings in a row. And you can't remember which one is that one. You want to turn it on or off. That's why we have this, the controller. So that's the simple storage controller. And for the controller to work, we're also going to need one of the storage link cables. So we're going to set down the controller somewhere near our system. We're going to connect it with a storage link cable. Okay. So now that I've connected the controller, okay, when we click on this one here, that's our menu, that's accessing our system, and that's manual crafting. Down here just gives us a little bit of information about what we all have connected. But what the controller does is when you right click on it, it gives you the ability to control any processing cables anywhere connected to your network, no matter where they are, how far they are away, you can control those from here, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and just fire this back on, right? You see it's correct going there? The green check mark means it's on. If I turn that off, you'll see that it stopped processing in there as well. I can even get rid of this lever if I wanted this because I can control it completely from in here. And anytime I want to turn that back on, just check the box, it's going to start auto crafting. Check it off, turns it back off again. So if it's something you want to only turn on at occasion, maybe um, you need a bunch of redstone, but you don't want to destroy all your redstone blocks. You want to have some of those too. You could turn on turning redstone blocks, auto crafting into redstone if you've set that up, on until you make a bunch of redstone and turn it back off again. So you've got redstone blocks and redstone. That's just an example of many ways. So if I had another processing cable with, say, turning redstone, resin, and ac or acorns into redstone blocks, that would be listed here. And I could turn it on or off. Now, when it is turned off, it's actually not off. It's only processed the requested number. And right now it's zero. So it's going to basically be turned off. Let's say I wanted to make 10 iron amber. I can go over here and just go up to 10. And it will make those 10. You see it disappeared? That's how many it makes. So if you're only needing to make just a few at a time, this is an easy way to do that. I'm gonna, I only need five, I only need four, but I don't want it using up all of my acorn and my resin because I may be using that for something else. Um, now, you can't set that at 10 and leave it there all the time and just turn it on and off where it only does 10. You would have to manually click that up to the amount that you want. Then as soon as you stop, it'll process those 10. But again, if you did want to just keep everything running long term, just flip it on. And that is going to sit there and just keep making whatever your recipe is for that. Every processing cable you have will be listed as its own transaction. And you can scroll up and down if you have a bunch of them. If you've got like 50 different auto processes, then over here on the right, you'll, this little gray box, you'll be able to scroll down and up. And that'll just show you all the different ones that are listed there. You can also do a search for one if you will. Um, but this is a great way if you're using simple storage and you have a whole bunch of different automation set up using auto crafters and processing cables to control those from one location. Now, something that I, I do myself. I use simple storage. I normally have at least 20 to 30 different automations going on at a given time. Uh, very common ones for me and what I mentioned earlier, turning acorn, uh, redstone acorns into redstone blocks. And then I have another one turning those blocks into redstone because it can just get tedious to do that manually every time I need some redstone. Uh, I do the same thing with lapis. I have one that turns lapis acorns into lapis blocks. I have another one that turns lapis blocks uh, into regular lapis. That's broken down. And then a very common one, I'll have one that just turns oak wood into, into wooden logs. Because I rarely need oak wood, I always need logs. So those are ones that I'll turn on and just let run all the time. But maybe I have too many on there. Maybe I need the power in my system for something else. And I just have so many auto crafters. I don't want to keep making that. This controller is a great way to be able to control by turning on and off or limit production to any process you have connected anywhere on that simple storage network, including inside outside compact machines uh, or across the world. As long as they're connected in some way, you'll be able to control them from this controller. So a great block to have if you do a lot, especially with the advanced uh, parts of simple storage with the auto crafting. Uh, I highly recommend giving this block a try. Very easy to make, very easy to use, and something you're going to find pretty useful. All right.
Well, that is going to do us for this tutorial. Uh, if you have any questions about this tutorial or any of my simple storage tutorials, or heck, any tutorials that I have, please be sure to put those down in the comments, and I will do my very best to get back with you as quickly as I possibly can, as well as if you have any you know, suggestions or recommendations for other tutorials you'd like to see in Sky Factory 4. I'm always looking for new ideas. Uh, you can also uh, reach me on my website, onlydraven.com, place there links to all my socials and stuff. You can also come to any of my live streams. If you got questions, I'm happy to answer them in real time. I stream on YouTube uh, here on me, on this channel on Sunday and Monday nights, 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, but I also have a Twitch channel, which is Only Draven Gaming, except all one word, no spaces, no underscore. I stream over on Twitch uh, four and five days a week as well. So feel free to swing over there. Uh, give a follow on that channel as well. If you have questions about Minecraft or games, I'm always happy to help out regardless of whatever I'm streaming. Um, but yeah. That is going to do us for today. Thank you all so very much for coming and hanging out with me. I hope you find this helpful, and I hope you have a great day.